Master Sergeant Jager. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and Ranking Member Blumenthal, and to all the esteemed members of this committee. I want to expressly thank Chairman Isaacson for including S-2888 in this legislative hearing. My name is Jerry Ensminger. I am a retired U.S. Marine, and I spent more than 11 of my 24 and a half years of service at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I would like to commend both Senators Burr and Tillis for writing and introducing this bill. This bill confirms to the hundreds of thousands of Marines, sailors, their families, and the thousands of civilian employees who were negligently exposed to the highest levels of harmful contaminants ever recorded in a major drinking water system that the United States delegation, the Senate delegation of North Carolina has our backs. Not only is this legislation another step in rectifying the gross injustice committed against the Camp Lejeune victims, it also has the potential of saving the American taxpayers hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the future. This bill, when passed, will require the Veterans Administration, or the VA, to utilize the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, or ATSDR, rather than exclusively contracting external government entities to perform evaluations or opinions on health effects related to the Camp Lejeune drinking water issue. ATSDR was created and mandated by Congress in 1980 to investigate, evaluate, and remediate human, health expo human exposures to potentially harmful contaminants found at national priority listed sites, such as Camp Lejeune. We all need to take a step back and ask ourselves why the VA refuses to utilize these preeminent governmental institutions, such as ATSDR, or the National Centers for Environmental Health, or the National Institutes for Environmental Health Sciences, or NIEHS, for those evaluations and or opinions relating to issues where veterans have been exposed to hazardous substances. Why does the VA automatically and exclusively resort to contracting external government entities for these evaluations? Here are some findings we have made concerning those questions. You can draw your own conclusions. One, when the VA contracts an external entity to provide them with an evaluation or an opinion, the VA writes a charge to the contractor. This is where the legitimacy of this practice comes into serious question. Every member of this committee is a politician, and the best analogy that I can use to describe the flaws in this process is political poll questions. A pollster with an agenda can write poll questions in a fashion which would provide them the response or responses they desire. There is no difference when writing a charge to a contractor. The person or persons writing the charge can fashion it in such a way or manner as to narrow the final evaluation or opinion. Number two. None of the work performed by these external governmental entities falls under the Freedom of Information Act. We have no access to the procedures or what scientific materials the contractor used in creating their evaluations. Where is the transparency in this process? There is none. Every time the VA contracts an external government entity for an evaluation, or opinion, the American taxpayer is paying double. We are paying to maintain, equip, and staff our governmental agencies who are fully capable of performing these tasks. We are also paying the VA's contracted price for these external government entities to execute this work. Several years ago, I asked VA's Dr. Terry Walters why the VA constantly insist on using external government entities when seeking evaluations or opinions regarding potentially harmful exposures. She claimed that the VA uses those external contractors for such work because the veterans wouldn't trust the work product of a governmental agency. Her response almost made me choke. Of course, 
Most veterans don't know that the VA, an interested party, writes a charge to an external government entity, another interested party, to provide them with an evaluation. On the other hand, governmental agencies such as ATSDR, NCEH, and the NIEHS are uninterested parties who would give an evaluation based on available scientific evidence instead of a charge which could restrict the evaluation to the desires of the contractee. Furthermore, all of the procedures and scientific materials utilized by the aforementioned governmental agencies would be accessible under the Freedom of Information Act. Mr. Chairman, if the VA truly had the best interest of Camp Lejeune veterans and their families at heart, they would never have created and utilized the training PowerPoint that I've attached to this testimony as attachment A. This PowerPoint presentation was utilized to train the VA clinicians who would be screening Camp Lejeune veterans and their family members pursuant to the passage and the president signing the Honoring America's Veterans and Caring for Camp Lejeune Families Act of 2012. This PowerPoint not only regurgitated outdated and disputed science, it reads like a roadmap for how to deny veterans and their families the care outlined in the law. Finally, the description of Dr. Walter's vision of a Camp Lejeune veteran's wife, which shows on slides 10 and 12 of attachment A, went beyond the pale. It was demeaning and outright despicable. What makes this even worse is the fact that when Dr. Walters was asked if this de de depiction was a real individual, she replied, no. I took several actual individual cases and lumped them together to create that one example. Does anyone need to wonder why we don't trust the VA? I challenge every member of this committee to research how much money the VA has, the VA has expended since fiscal year 2012 on external governmental contracts for evaluations or opinions. I would venture a guess that between Camp Lejeune and the C-123 aircraft Agent Orange issues alone, hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' dollars were spent. A lot of money that could have been spent caring for our veterans rather than devising methods and attempts to cheat them out of the benefits they deserve. Thank you, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have.